Welcome to Velocity City, where you get to know about all the exciting news and updates about our beloved sport, Formula One. On today's menu, you will be served on how Mercedes has decided that enough is enough. We will bring significant upgrades to the car. The little problem is that Monaco's track is not very suitable for testing the new upgrades. Well, more on that later. We will also discuss the condition of the Imola track after flooding. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe and press the bell icon to get regular updates from Velocity City. Let's get started. Following worries that the overflowing Santorino River might inundate the Imola track, officials prevented F1 drivers from attending the racetrack as of Tuesday afternoon. Extreme weather in the area caused rising water levels and severe flooding, which led to the cancellation of this weekend's Emilia Romagna Grand Prix only days before track action was scheduled to start. On the other hand, the Formula One teams were pressured to leave Imola quickly, so preparations could begin for the Monaco Grand Prix the following weekend. On Thursday morning, when the weather improved, it was decided that workers who were crucial to the team's equipment's derigging might enter. Any team garages, trailers, and other facilities that were erected earlier on the race week can now be dismantled. Consequently, plans for the drive to Monaco may be made after that. F1 doesn't anticipate any effects from the race cancellation of Monaco Grand Prix because construction were already underway at Imola. Mercedes's plans may have undergone a significant revision as a result of the cancellation of Imola because the race in Monaco is not ideal for introducing significant new components. The city circuit is more dangerous for accidents, which might destroy any new components early on. It is also very challenging to get valuable data on aerodynamic performance due to the track's rough design, low speed turns, and rapidly changing track surfaces. However, it would have made sense for Mercedes to hold out on introducing the update until the Spanish Grand Prix. But Mercedes has decided to proceed with operating the new parts as quickly as feasible. Why would Mercedes opt to bring enhanced cars to a circuit that is often not a good location for upgrades? The team was confident that the improvements, which include new side pods, a redesigned floor, and a new front suspension, will result in a noticeable performance improvement. Therefore, there is no justification for thinking that postponing its introduction would be advantageous. Any performance improvement is valuable on a circuit where qualifying is crucial and frequently determines your finishing position. But Sky Sports pundit and commentator Martin Brundle, who is known for his blunt opinions, didn't like this upgrade. He said, My concern is that it's a complete concept that a car is built around, and that's not going to win too many beauty parades. Is it that car? And it's got a touch of sort of Frankenstein about it. On the other hand, Mercedes knows that George Russell and Lewis Hamilton have struggled this year due to a lack of trust in the vehicle, particularly while braking. This is a crucial feature of the automobile, and Monaco in particular. Late braking may make or break a lap, and qualifying is crucial. Being confident in your automobile's ability to stop is even more crucial than usual, because a mistimed brake at Monaco will also result in your car crashing into the wall. It was appropriate to commit the adjustments at a location where any games may result in significant rewards, because the modifications to the suspension were explicitly intended to improve this. The good news for Mercedes is, Lewis Hamilton was happy with the upgrades when he test drove the car. I've generally had an amazing day. I really enjoyed driving today. It's not the place to ultimately test an upgrade, but the car was generally feeling good, Hamilton said. Max Verstappen also backed Mercedes and Lewis to bring upgrades to the Monaco GP. He said, I'm not betting, I'm not interested, and it is not my problem. It is Lewis' decision. I think he feels really happy at Mercedes. They've won a lot together, and maybe it is good as it ups the price at Mercedes a little bit. Another problem is that switching back to Mercedes' previous standard would require more work than switching to the new one. The updated W14 has been sent to Amola and delivered straight to Monaco. Therefore, it would have been a problematic logistical issue for the team to change its mind and redesign everything new for the Monte Carlo weekend if it had decided to stick with the original package. The risk here is on Mercedes. Since it takes time to make replacement components, problems might arise if the modifications don't work as expected. Mercedes has experienced this problem frequently over the years. Lewis or George risk totaling their vehicle in a wall if the vehicle experienced some unanticipated instability. Mercedes might be forced to mix old and new parts, which would be terrible for their performance if they didn't have enough time to stock up on replacement parts for the new suspension or side pods. In Monaco, where front end shunts are frequent, the front suspension are particularly susceptible, although I would anticipate Mercedes to have a lot of spare components on hand. 
However, there is some good news regarding new Mercedes replacement parts. They won't be tossed around as much as the previous year. The porpoising from the previous year has mostly disappeared by this point, and the track surface has also been resurfaced. Earlier in March, city workers started resurfacing half of the track. According to the Automobile Club de Monaco, the project will require 15,000 square meters of asphalt, or 1,800 tons of brand new asphalt. Monaco, a part of the first F1 season in 1950, is one of the oldest and arguably the most recognizable tracks on the F1 schedule. However, there are growing worries about its long-term position in the sport. Compared to other circuits, overtaking in the narrow street circuit has become incredibly unusual as Formula One cars get bigger and bigger. The Monaco Grand Prix has had an average of 10 overtakes in each race during the last 10 years. It's pretty amazing how awful the action is in Formula One when you compare it to the recent Formula E that took place at that circuit. The length of the modern Formula One vehicles is around 5.5 meters, with some variation from car to car, and they are all 2 meters wide. Only 5 meters long and 1.7 meters broad is a Formula E automobile. There were 116 overtakes in the Formula E race at Monaco this year, and we haven't seen even a tenth of those during the Formula One Grand Prix. Although other factors are at play that contribute to Formula E being action-packed, the size of the vehicles is undoubtedly one of them. So, was Mercedes a serious contender in the race due to the course modifications in their entry? Or was Red Bull again the favorite to win this race? The simple explanation would be that no one can defeat Red Bull based on this season's results thus far, and that Mercedes has no chance. However, Ferrari has made a strong start under the new rules, and this season, they are in a race with Red Bull. The only reason they didn't win the Monaco Grand Prix easily the previous year was because the Ferrari pit wall made some bad choices. But this year, I predict that Red Bull could have a competition in the qualifying round from another team. Fernando Alonso has already let it slip once in a conversation this year. In a green room, he smiled and told the Rebel drivers, just wait till Monaco. It is impossible to determine how significantly he increased his prospects here, but all the tracks on the schedule, this is where the so far dominant Red Bull may be exposed. Even Max Verstappen didn't take the Monaco GP lightly. He said to the media, it's just because of the corners being so tight and really quick changes of direction. He said, it's really a stop start compared to most tracks. You have to combine a lot more. It's a different technique. The corners are so tight, so slow, that you sometimes require a lot of different behavior of the car compared to normal tracks, and also the way you have to drive it, Verstappen added. And there you have it, the latest details about the status of the Monaco GP. So what do you think about the upgrades to the Mercedes car? Will Lewis Hamilton finally be happy about the car? Do you think Mercedes is the title contender in this race? Don't be shy, hit the comment section below and start the conversation. And don't forget to subscribe to get more exciting Formula One news. Thanks for tuning in. Take care and see you next time.